Were you uh, one of those players who loved the 24-7 Operation Metro 3000 ticket servers back in the days of Battlefield 3? Or maybe you preferred Operation Locker in Battlefield 4? Was that you? Yeah, I can see you nodding your head. If that was your jam, then this brand new game mode called Grind is going to be something that you're going to want to dive into. It's not 100% the same, and we will discuss that in the minute, but it's as close as you can get at the moment to that old meat grinder experience from popular Battlefield games gone past. Before we get into that, however, a quick word from our sponsor, Elgato. These guys are top of the line when it comes to streaming and recording equipment. Whether you want to step up your streaming game with the Stream Deck or you want to record your hot Battlefield 5 gameplay with the HD60S, these guys have got you covered. Click the link down below in the description and you can find out more. Okay then, so let's get the fundamentals of the grind game mode out on the table for you so you know what's up. It's a 64 player game mode, and technically, it's just a variant or a twist of the Conquest game mode. The aim is simply to beat the other team by whittling down their tickets to zero faster than they can do that to you. Killing enemies and holding the majority of flags is what's going to bleed away those enemy tickets. Now, four different maps support the mode, and they have been subtly changed and tweaked to make for the most grindy experience possible. So first of all, Rotterdam, that makes use of the Metro Bridge area, and that allows players to use it or the ground underneath to flank towards three different flag points that are placed in a line on top of the bridge. Extra fortification positions have been added, so you can pretty much hunker down and protect different lanes, and a few extra barges have been added to the canal so that you can cross the water even quicker. Devastation is next on the list. This is probably the widest setup of the four maps available, and that makes it the least grindy, so if you don't like grind game modes, then Devastation's probably going to be the one that you want to aim for. It puts the massive cathedral right in the middle, it houses a flag, and for most of the round you're going to be fighting over that, so pretty much like a normal conquest round, although you have nowhere else to go other than either side of the cathedral. It's pretty much all on that centre point. Extra fortification positions have been added, again, just like Rotterdam, so you can hunker down and you can cut off different lines of sight and pin down enemies. Narvik is involved as well as the third map. The railway area right above the docks is the focus here. The top and bottom layers of that structure, they can be used to go backwards and forwards, as well as space right down on the ground as well. So technically, there's three different vertical layers that are on offer here, which is really nice if you want to go on a cheeky flank. Once you're up on the railway segment, right on the top, however, it is really open. And then things get really claustrophobic and chaotic if you're inside those metal huts up the top, so best you be on your toes if you're playing that map. And lastly, my favourite one, Twisted Steel. The bridge has magically been repaired here, and three flag points are placed along the entire length of the bridge, and that's just where 95% of the action is happening. DICE has also added some hanging metal walkways underneath the bridge, which is a really nice touch, and it gives it a second layer, and that can be used for flanking, but down there, there's some extremely long lines of sight, and not a huge amount of cover unless you're going to duck down behind the metal boards, so it is a risky option if you want to get all the way along the bridge. It's good for flitting in and out of, though, or getting from one side of the bridge to the other widthways if enemies are advancing on you. So, as you can imagine then, with 64 players packed into a really tight space, things do get pretty hairy the moment the two teams meet at the central flag point, and then just for the next 12 to 15 minutes, absolute chaos ensues. Grenades are flying everywhere, smoke covering the entire area in soft cover from all the medics, tracers flying through those from bipod MMG players who are just set up on fortifications, Panzerfaust flying right past you as you duck for cover, and perhaps the most comedic part, considering this is a grind game mode, medic pouches are just flying everywhere here. You're going to be hard pressed to find another game mode in Battlefield 5 where medics are more helpful than they are in grind at the moment. I think I've been revived more today playing this new game mode than I have in total for the rest of the time playing Battlefield 5. Barely even touch the ground and someone's there picking you back up. It's a great experience, but it's kind of just contradictory to how you should really be playing Battlefield if you're looking for teamwork and tactics. 
Now, obviously, this new game mode is definitely not for everybody. I'm under no illusion that there is a large part of the Battlefield community that just don't like these kind of grindy experiences, but the reason this game mode has been created is because there is now a place within Battlefield 5 for players who do like the meat grinder experience to just play to their heart's content, or for as long as the game mode is available anyway. Previous maps like Operation Metro and Locker, it's trying to take that grindy experience and put it into a map that's already available in Battlefield 5. If you're a vehicle fan or you like combined arms combat, so infantry and vehicles working together, then this isn't a game mode that you're going to want to play all that much. But what I will say about the mode is this. It isn't representing the same kind of grindy experience as Metro and Locker from previous Battlefield games. It is slightly different in the way it does things. First of all, you're not getting stuck constantly on parts of the map because there aren't enough lanes for you to use. The classic Metro meme is just getting stuck at the escalators inside the train terminal and then spending the next 10 to 15 minutes waiting for your grenades to replenish so that you can just keep throwing them up and down the escalators. That kind of scenario doesn't really happen here in the grind game mode, and mainly that's because, this time, you're not fighting in this closed, claustrophobic corridor of a French train station. You're fighting out in the open air for the most part, so those explosions aren't being contained in the same way as they once were. It's now much easier for you to escape grenades, rockets and the dynamite because there is much more space for you to move where you're not in direct line of sight of another player. Players aren't stacking up one behind another in a doorway waiting to run through as the next cow going into the slaughterhouse. Although we might still be very tightly packed together in a much smaller space than playing a normal round of Conquest, you've got the freedom to move around a lot more than those previous grindy experiences like Operation Metro and Operation Locker. You might then think that that extra movement would open the door to more flanking options, and you'd definitely be right, at least in my experience so far. However, as expected, 90% of the players on the server will rush the objective locations like bees swarming round a honeypot. They know where the enemies are going to be, and thus they know where they can get the most kills. The mode is called the grind game mode after all, but because of the extra space that has been included, DICE is making sure that smarter players can flank those larger battles. They can loop behind and they can start a backrage pretty quickly if things come to a head on an objective point. This stops the battle getting stuck at certain parts of the map for too long and it just slightly increases the potential for tactical gameplay to occur. But only just slightly. It is still a meat grinder. For those players who don't like this kind of grindy game mode, then you don't have to worry too much because the mode is not going to be here for that long. It's only live in Battlefield 5 for the next 7 days and then it's going to be gone again. I've seen a lot of backlash to the mode already and I've seen a lot of love towards the mode as well and that sets things up quite nicely for my conclusion to this video. The grind game mode is a game mode that should exist for Battlefield 5. It serves to entertain a portion of the overall player base that likes that kind of experience. They like chucking grenades all the time, they like firing explosives at infantry, and they just love spamming bullets down long lines of sight, fishing for hit markers, and searching for kills. It's an experience that was popularised back in 2011 with Battlefield 3 Operation Metro on the Conquest game mode. Metro was and still is to this day the most popular map in Battlefield history because of the type of experience it offered and the large numbers of players who wanted to have that experience every time they launched the game. However, there will be certain people who did not like Operation Metro and didn't like the experience that it offered, and that led to many of those players who didn't like the experience to not play on the map at all, and in a certain way, they missed out on content. They didn't want to play that map and therefore had a smaller number of maps to play around with. And that's where I think Grind succeeds in Battlefield 5. Because DICE has chosen to introduce the Meat Grinder experience as a game mode, rather than building an entire map for it, it can exist on the same maps that support different types of gameplay as well. Grind sits separate to Normal Conquest, Frontlines, Grand Operations, and the other game modes. 
and that means that if you want to play normal conquest on Narvik with the planes and ground vehicles active, as well as a massively increased play zone, then you can still do that. If you like the kind of grindy experience that DICE is now offering in Battlefield 5 on Narvik, then you can play that as well, because that experience is now available for you. You're not being shut out of an entire map because you don't want to play that experience. You can still play it in other game modes that do offer you the experience that you're looking for. So then, there you go. That's the grind game mode for Battlefield 5. Not for everyone, but at least it's not denying you the chance to play on maps because it's a game mode, rather than a map built for the experience the game mode offers. Let me know what you think of it down below in the comments section and drop this video a like if you enjoyed it. But until next time, my name is Westy and I'll catch you guys in the next video.